Hello everyone, my name is Sumitra Menon and I'm the Deputy Director at the Centre for Biomedical Ethics at the Yong Lulin School of Medicine. So today my presentation will be about patients' rights and responsibilities. Now before delving into an outline, it's important really to highlight that the patient healthcare professional dynamic relationship is a reciprocal one. To some extent, there is a degree of asymmetry because the doctor has expert medical knowledge that most patients do not possess, and so patients will have to rely on doctors. However, patients are experts of themselves about their past medical history, their preferences in relation to healthcare, their values, beliefs, and culture. So ideally, this information should be shared with the healthcare provider in a relationship of mutual trust. In the old days, of course, um, the paradigm used to be that the doctor knows best, but we have moved along in large measure from that so that the relationship to some extent is a little bit more balanced and that both parties have rights and responsibilities in their respective roles. So a partnership of trust is what we're hoping to set up that would be the best arrangement to maximize health outcomes for the patient. So in this brief talk, I will be covering the patient's rights, the sources of those rights, patient's responsibilities, the sources of those responsibilities, and look at some challenges before concluding. So first, in relation to patient's rights. Well, the patient has a right to receive quality medical care. Healthcare institutions generally include this as a right that a patient can expect when they come to the healthcare institution for medical treatment or care. And such assurances to provide that quality medical care is usually a mission of healthcare institutions and patients are identified very often as their priority. And of course, within healthcare institutions, there are healthcare professionals and other professionals who make up the healthcare team that are involved in delivering that care to the patient. Now, another right relates to the right to be treated with dignity and respect in a healthcare encounter. Um, some would argue this is a human right, uh, and everyone is entitled to be treated in this way, regardless of the setting. In relation to patients and their rights to be treated with dignity and respect, this should be granted regardless of the patient's social status, their age, gender, ethnicity, nationality, and regardless of whether they have a mental or physical disability. So for example, someone who speaks a different language to the healthcare professional should be provided with an interpreter. Someone who is deaf should receive sign language interpretation. Um, and some people have challenges with following complex information and they should be able to have the option to receive the information in simpler formats that could help them understand, especially when we're looking at complex medical information. Now, when we're thinking about the right in terms of patient's autonomy, the patient also has a right to make decisions about their health care and treatment. Now, very often this is construed or perceived in terms of obtaining informed consent from the patient to proceed with the medical treatment. Now, for simple treatment, such as you know, a simple suture of a cut, this would be quite a straightforward matter. However, respecting this right, especially in relation to serious medical decisions, requires much more from the healthcare team. Ideally, the patient and the healthcare team should have a discussion to understand the patient's values, beliefs, healthcare preferences, 
because this will provide the appropriate framing to contextualize the discussion on treatment options, their benefits and risks, and alternative treatments available. Sometimes patients would like their family members or loved ones to be involved in these conversations and to the extent that this is possible, it should be respected by the healthcare team. Patients can also ask questions and for those who have difficulty articulating their concerns, ideally they should be encouraged to participate in the decision-making process. The healthcare team can also engage with the patient's loved ones and family members that the patient has invited into the conversation and those family members and loved ones may actually help and foster the patient's autonomy by being a sounding board, asking the right questions or clarifying some of the information that has been given by the healthcare professional. Now, of course, patients also have the right to refuse treatments or aspects of a treatment and the healthcare professionals must apprise them of the consequences of such a refusal. In the end, if the patient does indeed refuse a treatment, then this decision should be respected by the healthcare team. Do note, however, that patients do not have the right to demand clinically inappropriate treatment and healthcare professionals are not obliged to provide such treatment. In relation to the patient's right to make decisions about their own health care and treatment, they do also have the right to seek a second opinion. This may arise if the patient has doubts about their treatment or they would like to consider other options from another health care provider and such a request should be respected. Patients also need to be aware that when they refuse treatments, that they will have to bear the consequences of that refusal. Patients can also further exercise their rights in relation to decision making by making an advanced medical directive, a lasting power of attorney, or an advanced care plan. These documents will allow the patient to express their health care preferences and the healthcare professionals will respect them to the extent permitted by the law. Another right that a patient is entitled to is the right for their medical information to be kept private and confidential by the healthcare practitioners and healthcare institution. In their relationship with the healthcare providers, patients share information about their medical history and they trust that the, that the healthcare team will keep that information private and confidential and only use it with respect to providing them with healthcare and treatment. Now, the healthcare team and the institution would only share that information with those who are involved in caring for the patient or when they're monitoring the quality of care that's being delivered. Sharing that information with anyone else is only allowed with the permission of the patient. So patients can expect that the healthcare professionals and the healthcare institutions will be taking reasonable steps to protect the medical information that they have in their possession. Now, when we're thinking about the sources of patients' rights, we first looked at the patient right to receive quality medical care. Well, the source of that would be in institutional policies, but there would also be a degree of quality control through um, the government, which may be in the form of regulations such as the Healthcare Services Act. For the right to be treated with dignity and respect, well, that's articulated in healthcare ethics when we're talking about respecting, for pa respecting patients and respecting their autonomy. And this is also articulated in the various professional codes. Um, for doctors, this would be the Singapore Medical Council Ethical Code and Ethical Guidelines. And there are similar professional codes for the other healthcare professionals, such as nurses and pharmacists. In relation to the right to make decisions about healthcare and treatment, 
Again, the source that we're looking to is Healthcare Ethics, which again talks about respecting patient autonomy and decisions that they take in relation to themselves and their person. These are also articulated in the professional codes, like the ethical code and ethical guidelines we just mentioned, and it's also reflected in law. So for example, um, the common law, and by that I mean uh, cases which have decided these matters previously, but it's also enshrined in the Mental Capacity Act, Section 37 of the Singapore Civil Law Act, and the Advanced Medical Directive Act, amongst others. When we're looking at the patient's right to privacy and confidentiality in relation to their information. Again, the duty of privacy and confidentiality is enshrined in healthcare ethics. Um, it's also in the professional codes, the ones that we've just mentioned, and in the law, it's in the common law, which means case law, and in statutes such as the Personal Data Protection Act of Singapore.